Here's Chris. Hey, Chris. Welcome to the room. Hey, Nell. How are you doing? I'm getting away with it, Chris. <laughs> so I've been following you since about 2015, and I actually kind of, I guess you would say, life coach uh, people through with spirit and you know tarot cards and astrology. And you were recommended to me back in 2015, and since then I always quote you and your books <laughs> to people so to see you on here and actually be able to talk to you is kind of surreal. But um, I wanted to ask you about, it's a pretty complex situation, so I'm going to try to summarize it. Um, I met a professional astrologer back in 2015, the same one that uh, you know introduced me to your books. I met him in 2015 and I ended up moving out to California to live with him at the beginning of 2016. And I lived with him for a year and he got super, super sick and decided it was a good idea that he moved to Colorado. It was just a situation where, you know, we had decided at that point, let's, you know, break things off, even though we love each other very much. We work together. Uh, I just, started helping him run his business so i worked for him in may of 2020 came around and i keep in mind i've been working for him remotely uh, since i left and i've even gone out and visited him he's came and visited me and something happened that i just never got an explanation for because he called me may 28th of 2020 crying he and told me he was letting me go and i asked him why i was really confused he just gave me like a hundred dollar raise you know three weeks before uh, said i was doing really good and he said i just can't handle things emotionally and it's been almost two years and i've talked to so many people i've got gotten advice from so many people and i basically get you know what i need to do to move on but i still can't help but you know wake up and think about them half the day on most days there have been periods where i've gotten by without it bothering me so much but i don't know i was just wondering what your thoughts on how i mean what would be a good idea to release myself from this I feel like I've tried everything and I haven't even spoken to him since that phone call. Really? You haven't talked he, to him in 18 months? He won't speak to me. Oh, so so I, I just, just stopped so trying. So he wasn't just letting you go from his employment, he was letting you go from his life. Yes, and it was very traumatizing because, you know, I, I do my own thing and I sell readings and I have a following and everybody just kind of saw the situation from the surface and I lost like my majority of my following. It was just really, really weird and I still to this day don't have answers about what happened. So and he won't speak to me. So I hate to sound, I hate to say the obvious at the beginning when then we can go deeper i want to go deeper into this deeper emotionally and and spiritually but chris let me let me start with what could be painfully obvious do you think he might have simply found someone else yes and created a, it's and created very a interesting you're saying that because that's exactly what i've been thinking i guess it has to be and if he found if he if he found and fell in love with someone else and if he fe and if this other person felt that you and his feelings for you were threatening in the way of of their relationship, then he may have had to make the decision to let you go from his employment, as well as to let you go from his life, in order to allow the other person and himself to feel safe in their relationship, because he probably was very honest with this other person i'm presuming that, that this could be true that he is with another person and he probably was very honest with this other person about the 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 human being called chris and i'm sure the other person at one point might have said you know do you need to continue because i'm feeling uncomfortable with uh, the presence of chris in your life both as an employee and you know that he might fly out here and 
visit every so often, or you might go back there and visit every so often. Can we simply have an exclusive relationship with just you and me? And it could be that this man that you're talking about did not want to hurt your feelings more than, than he thinks he wanted to, so he simply hasn't come. How, how would I put it? Come clean. He hasn't just you know, told you the whole story. I totally understand that, and that makes perfect sense. It makes sense What? to me. When things are inexplicable and there's no explanation, it, it usually means not always, but it usually means there is an explanation. It's simply not being offered. Right, and you know what makes it even more confusing is the year because I, I stayed with them throughout the entire year of 2016, and we decided like we're not going to be an official item, even though it still sort of felt like it.、Um, but as the years passed, it became more about work. But we still, you know, would talk to each other very sweetly, but nothing, I would say, romantically. And what's odd is the previous October,、uh, before that phone call in May of 2020, I went. He flew me out to see him in Colorado, and something he said just kind of made my head spin. He was like, "What do you say we start over?" And I, I really didn't know how to answer that because I had given him the impression, and I had told him before, like, if you feel like you're stuck with me or something, or you can't move past me, like. I just want you to know, I'm not gonna feel a certain type of way if you want to go meet some people or want to date again. Like I'm not gonna hold that against you. Maybe it would hurt my feelings at first. Did, I don't did, know. Did, did you actually say those things? <clears throat> yeah, I did. Okay. So, so many times. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, so what? What did he mean? Did you ask him what he meant when he said, "What do you let's? What do you think about starting over? Let's start over." What does that mean? That's exactly what I said. I was like, "Well, what do you mean?" He's like, "You know, just starting over with you and I is the way he put it." As if we hadn't known each other. As if we hadn't been intimate. As if I think he meant more in a physical sense, like move me out there and、oh. be. Because he has this image in his head of what a relationship is, I guess yeah, should look, should look like. So, right. So when so when he said that, and if you thought that what he meant was. Let's start over and let's rebuild the relationship in the way that I, you know, meaning him, in the way that I, you know, feel it should be. Did you say no, or did you say great? I'll be I'll be back in a week with my things, and I'll move. We、in. talked about it, and I thought about it for a minute, and I said, yeah, we can try that, and we made a decision that I was going to move out there. There was a lot、okay. of problems going on here, and、okay. I live in Alabama, so. Uh, there was a lot of problems going on here anyway, and he said we made the decision and moved me out there. Okay.、Uh, when I took the flight back home and got back, we did get in an argument about something.、Uh, I had found out some things he had said about me behind my back to some to another、uh, very famous astrologer, and it really hurt my feelings. And I confronted him about it, and he just. Kind of blew up on me, and it, he wasn't making any sense. And then he's telling me I, I'm straight. I want to be with a female, and I'm just so confused at this point. So, so what's confusing about it? You don't believe him?、Uh, I just don't know where that came from. It doesn't、uh, matter where it came from. The question is, do you think it's true for him? No. <laughs> oh, and you, you think he's making it up? I, I believe he doesn't really actually know. Himself. I think he knows what he wants. I think it scares him to show that side of him to the world because I mean he he's on a show every week. I mean he's kind of like a public figure, and he's just scared to let people know, know who he is. I, I can't believe that. I mean, my God, the, the public figures these days. What's his name on CNN? What's his, what's the guy's name? The what beautiful white hair and he's on CNN.、Oh, every, I know you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, he's on CNN and then Rachel Maddow and on, on NBC. I mean, come on. Every, That's every, <laughs> I know. People people are all widely known when when people you know can't allow、uh, everything about themselves to be publicly known. So I don't believe that for a minute. It's I, what, what I think is it may very well be. That he, that he that he wants to have a relationship with a female, maybe even found a maybe even fell in love with a female, and maybe they even found a way to to be with each other that works for both of them, and that would totally and completely explain his call in May 2020. That would explain everything. Oh, 
Mm, yeah. I mean, my God, that would explain why he didn't tell you. And, and it's probably, it also explains a little bit about why he said to you in October uh, before that, you know, what, what do you think about starting over? I think he was reaching a point in his life when he was questioning his very essence. Who am I really? Not just physically, not just in terms of my sexual orientation, but in every way, in every way, you know, spiritually and metaphysically and emotionally and the whole, the whole gestalt. I think he was questioning and fell into a place of deep questioning, which is why he wanted to quote unquote suggest starting over. And, and I think that, uh, that he found himself in a situation where he opened himself to an aspect of his reality that he might have not even expected, might even have surprised the heck out of him, might have surprised himself. Yeah, it, it had to, and I think he just wasn't being honest with me, but it really took a toll on my people, life. And People are rarely honest with each other, Chris. That, that, that's People are rarely honest with each other. It takes enormous bravery, enormous courage, and enormous whew, willingness to withstand the buffeting that we're, we know we're going to take if we're totally, completely, and absolutely honest with each other. But I, I do appreciate that it's taken a huge toll on your life. I, I totally get how that could be true. And I totally get that that's what's happened to you. How young is the picture of you that I'm looking at? Because I'm seeing you on my screen. You look like you're about 27. What are you? Oh, thank you. I'm 33. <laughs> so, so if you're 33 years old, you've got a whole lifetime ahead of you, Chris. Right. I can't even remember when I was 33. Chris, I'm 78 years old. I'm talking to him, 78 years old. Yeah. If I told you, if I told you the things that happened to me between 33 and yesterday, you, you wouldn't even be able to believe it. The changes, the shifts, the different relationships, the different uh, work that I've done, the different careers, the places I've lived. Oh, Chris, you're at the starting line. I just, you know, two years is a long time and it's coming up on that and it's just I know me and I, I don't know why I can't walk away from it though I can't explain it in a way that well, would make me be, feel better to you, walk you, away you, no you what you should walking away is not the option you don't have to walk away from your love for this gentleman you don't have to walk away from your feelings about it you don't have to walk away, as I was saying to somebody earlier on this pro on this very on this very program today. You don't have to walk away from your sadness, or even for that matter, from your anger, from your frustration, from any of your feelings. It's not about walking away. It's about having them. The only way around is through. The only way around is through. So we don't walk away from it or try to walk around it. So when you say, you know, you're having a hard time walking, no kidding, I would have a hard time walking away from such a situation as well. But if you are counseling people, then remember that I told you this on this day of your life, don't walk away from it, walk right through it. Hey, this is how I feel, this is how it feels to me, and, and stay with your feeling, express your feeling in any way that you reasonably can, and allow yourself, maybe you want to write about it, or in some way or another, allow yourself to move into fully. Because what you resist persists. I'm telling you right now, what you resist persists. And if you resist feeling what you're feeling, it will persist until you're 49 years old. And you'll never be able to let go of it in the sense of being released from its emotional bondage, the emotional chains. But you can allow yourself to move through the rest of your life. You know, I, I still feel sad to this day about a lady that I was with and that in, a, in a very deep, meaningful relationship. I mean, really meaningful, capital M. Really, and I don't mean just sexually, I mean meaningful at every level. The kind of person you wake up with and talk to about everything in life, God and love and, and business and, and, and trials and tribulations and politics and everything you just talk to that person about everything and for reasons that i totally don't get she came to me one day chris and she said and we were living together and she came to me and she said I, I, i've got to i've got to end this particular arrangement i said whoa what you know what have i done guess what an old lover 
from years ago found her and came back into her life, and she wanted to give it another try. She wanted to give it another chance, and so she did. She went off with him. But you know how how bad it was with me, Chris. You want to hear something sad? I wouldn't even let go of the things that she left. I mean, little things like her hairbrush. I swear to God, I would take her hairbrush out of the drawer where I had stashed it away, and just hold it in my hand, and smell the hair. The, 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 and I could still, I could still pick up the fragrance of her, of her hair. That's how, that's how not over it I was. But right, I'm, it almost feels like a death. Well, yeah, of course, it is a death. It, it is a death. It's simply that they haven't left their physical form, but it's a it's a death in every other way. But unlike some other people, I didn't try to let it go or somehow step around it or step away from it. I indulged myself in the feeling of sadness and the feeling of mourning, and the, and even the feeling of the, the little rift of anger that I felt that she would just turn around and walk away from what I thought was a meaningful relationship that she had with me. And to this day, I think about her. Yeah. You know, I, I caught myself about a year ago, not recently, but about a year ago, looking up on Facebook just to see if she had a Facebook page, <laughs> just to see, just to see if I could, you know, maybe reconnect and just and just you know ask her. Well, how did it work out? Are you still with the guy that you left me for? You know, I just, <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever. But, but, well, you know, but, I I didn't say I didn't bring up you know all of 2020. I was. I would label it batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but 2021, I've been, I've kind of put a lot of self discipline on myself as far as bothering him or trying to reach him. And yeah, that, that's kind of where I'm at now. So, but thank you for sharing your story. That definitely makes me feel a lot better. And I think I know what I'm supposed to do as far as where I'm at right now. Well, there's nothing you're supposed to do, but there's much that you're invited to do. Well, for and, me, you know, <laughs> and, and let let yourself wear your sadness as a badge. Let yourself yeah. let yourself be sad. Let yourself be, you know, batshit crazy, but also live your life, Chris. You got a long life ahead of you. You're going to find other people that you love, and other people who love you. You're going to find expansion in your work. You're going to find that when you're 43, 10 years from today, you're going to look back on all this. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, remember this, that this old man told you this. When you're 43, you're going to look back on your life and you're going to go, wow. Wow. <laughs> Was Neil ever right? <laughs> your life is just beginning, pal. You're at the starting line. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Neil, do you mind? It was uh, really great talking to you. I'm sorry. Chris, do you mind if I share something I actually learned from Neil about a situation just like this from reading his books? Would that yeah, be okay with you, Neil? Sure. First of all, I wanted to celebrate you for loving so much because okay. it wouldn't hurt so much if you didn't love so much. And what a beautiful gift that is that you have inside of yourself. So I wanted to just celebrate that for you as much as this hurts and feels bad. Lucky you to have loved because there are so many people who don't even know that feeling or don't allow it. So I just wanted to congr congratulate you for that. And yes. how amazing, and this is what I learned from Neil's books years ago that I've applied to my own life, is how deeply grateful I have been for the people that have shown up in my life that haven't worked out. For the people that I have deeply loved that didn't work out because it allowed me to move towards what I really wanted and get really clear on what I really wanted and know what I would allow and what I would not allow in my experience of relationship love because you now know what you don't want and I'm celebrating that for you and I'm excited and Neil always it's going to work out so beautifully for you and I hear it in your voice and I can see it in your heart before you can even see it. So I just wanted to share that with you because I heard it in all of you and you will be able to see this soon, I promise. Well, thank, thank you, Neil, you. for allowing me. Oh, you made me tear up. Thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you, Neil. You're welcome, Chris. Nice to have you with us here today. Thanks for having me. You have a good day. Yeah, you too. <laughs>